Happy birthday. You might be thinking, it's not my birthday. Sure it is. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. I think it's amazing that Jesus said to his disciples, it's better for you that I go away. Because he knew he could only be in one place at one time as a human being, even though he was God. And so the best thing was for God to come through Pentecost power, through the Holy Spirit working in us. So the day the Holy Spirit came was the day the church was born. So indeed, it is our birthday. So happy birthday as we celebrate the Holy Spirit who is in us and is the power who helps us take the gospel to the world. Many people are asking, when are we opening up? When do we get back to live services? And the answer is, I don't know. Uh, We hope that it's soon. We're waiting until Blair County is green, but even then we don't know restrictions with the number of people that we are allowed. So we're hoping it's in June, but we're still not sure. We'll be certain to give you an update on all that information. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. My name is John Gottesart pastor here along with Grace Marie, and we hope that this service is a wonderful blessing to each of us as we celebrate the Holy Spirit among us. Found of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, it's sung by flame. Jesus loves me. No matter if I win or lose or make any mistakes, he still loves me a lot. See, I got it that time, and Jesus still loves me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we know that no matter if we win, or lose, or make big mistakes, or little mistakes. 
We know that you'll always be there to help us love others, and you will love us, and you will help us be guided through everything. Amen.
let's seek God's face in prayer. Father, as much as we want needs met and prayers answered, we want you. Fill us. Satisfy us with your presence. Holy Spirit, breathe freshly upon your word each day. Give us an undying passion for Jesus. Help us to tarry before you in our secret place. Baptize us in the fire of your holiness. Break our hearts over what breaks yours. May the things that delight you delight us, for then we'll have the desires of our heart. Holy Spirit, fall. Follow my brothers, follow my sisters. Breathe on us all afresh. Like a mighty wind, light the fire again. Come to magnify the sun in us today, tomorrow, for always. Show the Savior to the world through our lives. We want to take your good news and your power to a lost and dying world. In Jesus' mighty, precious, holy name we pray. Amen. So be it. Even though we aren't meeting in person, we have many ministries that are continuing to go on during this time. We'd like to tell you a little bit about what's going on in our church. And so you can think of this as a state of the church address. And we have members of the leadership team here to share with you. Hi everyone, I just wanted to give you guys some updates on what's going on with our youth and children's ministries. Um, so our youth group is continuing to meet and they are doing some spiritual formation um, groups as well as doing just some online socialization and just trying to stay plugged in with each other. Our youth ministries are meeting on Facebook on at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. So if you have any little ones in your house and you'd like to join in, we're having some different events and story times and some things there that we'd love for you to check out as well. We hope you're all doing well. We miss you and we can't wait to get back to worship soon. Hello, my name is Roger Wise. I'm a longtime member of this church. I'm also a member that leadership team and have been on, involved in music program and chancel choir for many years. So if you've been watching the videos, you see we have music to help us worship each Sunday. And Susan Hamilton, our minister of music, and uh, is working on keeping a schedule together and scheduling people through the summer for special music. She has also been sending through emails, devotionals, to, to the music department for people to enjoy and to encourage them on a daily basis. And uh, that has been a, uh, an inspiration to me, and it certainly has helped. Uh, also, I would like to say that uh, we're missing our church, we're missing the choir, but we're still here in spirit. And I would like just like to say, uh, stay safe, and God bless you all. Communication is really important. Staff members have been calling members of our congregation and friends to check in on them and offer prayer and support. Paul Bottenfield, our visitation pastor, continues to call on those in nursing homes and those who are homebound to offer prayers of encouragement and hope. Church staff will be sending out letters and personal notes to some of our inactive or de-churched members encouraging them to come back and reminding them ways that they can connect during this pandemic. If you know someone from the life of the congregation you have not seen for a while, by all means, reach out to them and encourage them to cling to Jesus during this time. Stay safe and remember, we're in this together. Hi everyone, I'm Lou Ann Clary, part of your leadership team here at the First United Methodist Church in Hollidaysburg. I would just like to say I hope that everyone is doing well and has stayed healthy during these last really tough months that we've had. And I am really missing my church family here. And I can't wait till we can all get back together and worship safely in our own sanctuary. We are working hard to try to provide a safe place and when it's time that we can get together and worship again. In the meantime, our pastors and staff 
continue to coordinate, lead, and edit online worship for each weekend. Online Bible studies have recently begun, and online prayer and support groups are already functioning. People are taking steps to be the church without gathering in our church building. After all, we are the church, and I hope to see you soon. Each week, servants come to organize and deliver backpacks for the Tiger Backpack Program. The packs are then taken to school for distribution to children in our community. This is continuing even though school is not in session. We continue to give both monetary and food donations to American rescue workers that help some of our neighbors in need in central and southern Blair County. Heart for the Hungry has temporarily stopped serving some of the homeless and hungry in Altoona, but our hope is that service will start back up in the month of June. Here's some food for thought. We're still a church even if we can't meet in person. I've been missing my church family through this pandemic and I'm praying that you are well and safe. Take care. Before the COVID-19 pandemic and our shutdown, our average weekly giving, including big fish tuition, was around $22,800. From March 15th through May 17th, our average weekly giving decreased to about $15,000. That's a 33% decrease, or about $7,600 a week. Some of that decrease is a result of the preschool being closed. First United Methodist Church currently has 26 employees with 12 working for our Big Fish preschool program. When the governor issued the stay-at-home order due to COVID-19 crisis, your church leadership team understood that the church would change for the foreseeable future, and it could well impact the well-being of our staff. We were then informed that churches were eligible for the payroll protection program. Pastor Grace Marie and our director of financial operation, Amy Young, worked diligently with our local bank to apply for a loan. We were approved for the loan and received $91,000 to use for salaries. If we adhere to all the government guidelines, which we have, the loan will be forgiven, requiring no repaying of the loan. We have been able to maintain our staff at their current salaries. As we approach exhausting the funds, the leadership team will evaluate the strategy that we will have going forward to maintain a vibrant staff for this church. Until the governor once again allows us to open up and return to in-person services. We are thankful for our dynamic staff and your prayers as we meet this challenge. We know that First Church is truly special. I hope that everyone can feel God working within us to make us truly full of his spirit as we go forward. God is truly great. And remember, smile, God loves you. Hello, my name is Melissa O'Connor and my family and I attend the 930 service. This is my first year on the leadership team and I am so excited to be able to serve both you and the church. Over the last couple of months, the number of programs that we offer has been dramatically reduced. So we saw a 44% drop in program expenses. This amounted to a savings of $6,000. While some operating expenses and utilities remained the same, many others increased in March and April. Therefore, we saw an overall increase of 9% in our operating expenses. Unfortunately, March was filled with unexpected repairs and maintenance costs. Hello, I'm Todd Kelly, member of your leadership team. We're making announcements this week and Mom here to tell you about our Make It Grow funds. They were distributed a couple weeks ago before the stay at home order was put into effect. We hope to have a bake it, make it, sew it, grow it fair in a couple of weeks or months. As soon as we're able to, we encourage you to grow your funds wherever and whatever way you can. Don't feel as if you need to return them right away. The due date will be published at a later time. Thank you. Prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, our expenses exceeded our income. That continued for the month of March. The Payment Protection Fund helped for the months of April and May. Once we see where our finances are at the end of this month, the leadership team will make decisions about staff hours and salaries. 
We ask for your prayers during this time. I wanted to share a quick Bible verse with you about hope. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I uphold you with my righteous right hand. As a precaution, we withdrew $100,000 from savings just in case we needed it to help with expenses and to cover salary for the church. We have not needed to tap into these funds. As you can imagine, our congregation's endowment fund has been affected because of the coronavirus pandemic. Over the past couple of months, our endowment dropped by 6%. As you know, the stock market fluctuates greatly over the years. Since we have had our endowment, we have seen an average of a 6% increase. Hopefully that gives you a broader understanding of what's been going on in the life of this congregation and how things look financially. The month of May has been a lot better with giving, so thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, we truly appreciate it. You know, when we make a vow to become a member of the church, we do promise to serve that church faithfully by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So even when a pandemic is on, uh, those things don't diminish. There's so many uncertainties, and yet we know in the midst of this pandemic, God is certain, and God is faithful. So may we live out our baptismal vows as well as our membership vows and as we faithfully serve Christ for such a time as this. May God bless you. A reading from the book of Philippians. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Even though I, too, have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish. In order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness, of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Hi, I'm Pastor Grace Marie Ransom, and it's good to be with you today um, for our online worship service. So you just heard a scripture from Philippians chapter 3 as we make our way through Philippians. And you're hearing from Paul, who is in prison, and he is writing to his friends at the church in Philippi, the church that he planted. Now, this scripture begins where he says, Friends, I don't mind telling you again, and I'll write it a lot of more times if you just need to hear it. And then he goes on to talk about himself and all of his accomplishments. Now, sometimes when today, in these days, we read the scripture, um, some people are like, Paul is so arrogant, listing all of his accomplishments. But actually, this was a very common this was a very kind, common kind of argument that people used in Greco-Roman times. Um, it's rhetoric. And, and listing your own accomplishments, the character of who you were, was a way in a discourse, an argument, a way of persuading people 
by evidence of your side of the argument. Now, um, in this in this section of the scripture that we're reading, Paul is addressing the conflict that the church in Philippi is having. He's saying, listen, um, you're hearing from both sides. You got some people saying you need to follow the law, some people saying you have to be circumcised, others saying you don't have to circumcise um, to be Christian or a part of this church, but let me tell you about me. And he kind of goes into a checklist at the beginning of the scripture. And basically what Paul is saying is, really, there's no one more Jewish than me. And he actually gives us this checklist here. And so here's Paul, born a very privileged person, and he's giving his checklist of who he is. And he's like, listen, I am... um, as Jewish as it gets, okay, because I was circumcised on the eighth day, right? So he checked that box. Um, He's a member of the nation of Israel. Yes, God's chosen people, right? And not only that, he was a member of the tribe of Benjamin. Um, The tribe of Benjamin was descended from Jacob's favorite son, Benjamin, his youngest son, right? So Check. He was that. He was born Hebrew to Hebrews. So it's not even there was, he was, he was essentially who the nation of Israel was. There wasn't any kind of um, bloodline of a, from a different nation in, in his family. He was born Hebrew to Hebrews. He was educated as a Pharisee. Now, the Pharisees were, um, as we know in a lot of our stories in the New Testament, the Pharisees were persons who were educated in the law of Judaism. So they were the ones who studied all of the laws that had to be followed, and they were experts in it. And remember, when we hear about them in the New Testament, it's kind of Jesus and the Pharisees are are always going back and forth, trying to catch Jesus in in something that doesn't show, um, something that maybe doesn't really follow to the letter of the law. So he was very well educated as a Pharisee. Um, and that you can see that from his writing. Scholars say that when, if you are fluent in Greek and you read the original Greek of the New Testament, that Paul's writing is stunning. They say his prose is just amazing. It's like um, he does so well. He was obviously a very educated man. And so um, he obviously followed all the laws. He called himself righteous. He was righteous because he followed all the laws and um, was blameless under the law, right? And then we know um, that who that he defended the religious purity of the Israel people, right? Um, so much so that he persecuted the Christians, the early church. Um, Remember, Paul was Saul, and he was the greatest persecutor of the church. And because of all these things, because he had been born in such a high status, so privileged within um, the nation of Israel. And so what Paul is saying in this scripture is, listen, I know people are saying, oh no, you can't be a part of the church unless you're circumcised or you can't be a part of the church unless you continue to follow the law. But do you know what Paul says about following the law and about someone like himself who was such a high-ranking and prestigious Jew? You know what he calls this entire list? He says, it's rubbish, He says, it's trash. He's like, this is nothing to me now. 
He said, what's really important, it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or not. It doesn't matter whether you, um, you follow the law or you don't. It doesn't matter who your parents were. It doesn't matter if you're descended from one of the tribes of Israel. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. What matters is Christ. What matters is Christ that who you are in Christ. He said, I'll give you a checklist of, that you can decide whether or not you are a Christ follower. He says, all of my, all of my background means nothing now because I know Christ. All of my background means nothing because I know Christ, because I trust Christ because I emulate Christ, because I love like Christ loved. And so he's telling this church in Philippi, listen, this is not worth losing your church over. This is not worth dividing over. I am telling you as someone who came from a place that thinks that those who follow Jesus are the, are the most evil people on earth, that they are being led down a dark path, I am telling you that that is not true, that there are no requirements to follow Christ except to know Christ, make him the center of your life, to follow his teachings, and to tap into that power of the resurrection that Christ has. He's saying all of us have this power of the resurrection. Don't get caught up on the laws and the rules. Make sure that Christ is at the center of your life. I think this is so appropriate for our world, for our own journeys with Christ, no matter what we're going through right? But certainly it seems, it seems so um, current to us now because we hear all the time conflicting stories about this pandemic. We, perhaps some of us are starting to wonder if it's even real because we live in a place with so few cases. We, some of us no, have no question that it's real, and yet they, and yet it also has made us feel more anxious about whether we want to go out. Some of us feel like wearing masks is a threat to our own freedom, when really when you wear a mask for other people, to protect them. Some of us don't know what to think. Some of us are like, can this just be over? Friends, this is not the time to be divided as a church. This is a time when we need to tap into the power of the resurrection. This is a time when we need to know Christ. We need to trust Christ. We need to love others as Christ loved them, putting others before himself, putting you and me before his own life. We need to tap into the strength of God to give us patience. We need to accept that the way the world was at the beginning of 2020 is not going to be the way it is at the end of 2020. This is a time for us to practice what Paul is preaching. That don't get up caught up in the rules of what it means to be a Christian, but center your lives on Christ. Remember Offer support to those who are struggling. Reach out to someone if you need to talk. And we hope that as we continue to discern when it will be okay for us to gather again in person, 
practicing social distancing guidelines, wearing our masks for the sake of others, that we pray that that day is a joyful time. Even though it's not going to be business as usual, even though it's going to look so much different, but Christ is still at the center of it. So I ask you, do you sometimes kind of check off your list of, well, I'm a better Christian because I do this, or I'm a worse Christian because I don't do this? Leave your checklist behind and focus on Christ and all that he did for us. Focus on who he is and how he loves and then love others before yourself. Let's pray. God, I am so grateful that we can be together in this time, even though it's digitally, even though it's not the way we want to be together. God, I give you thanks for those who have been joining us who have never come to our church or perhaps have come to our church once or twice but haven't gotten back. We thank you that who you are and what your love does for each of us can transcend pandemics, can transcend screens and YouTube and those of us clustered in our homes. God, I ask that you give us all wisdom, discernment, and remind us that with you at the center of our lives, it doesn't matter what we've done, where we're going, it only matters that we know you and trust you. In your name we pray, amen. I can remember when I was a little girl and I would get up on Sunday morning and I would grab my Bible and I'd grab my $1 bill and out the door we'd go to Sunday school. And we'd get there and I'd walk in the room and I'd put my dollar in that little offering plate. And I can remember that I really loved doing this because I felt like my little bit was now part of something that was much bigger. And now as an adult, I am blessed with the honor to be one of the youth leaders here at the church. And all the time I can see our little bits coming together to transform lives for Jesus. And even in the midst of COVID-19, Jesus is still providing opportunity, opportunity to give. We can mail it in. We can stop by the church. We can get online and do an online giving. And Jesus is still taking our giving, pulling it together and transforming lives for him. So church, I wanna thank you for your little bit, for your generous giving so that the kingdom of God can still be glorified. I count on one thing The same God never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God is never late He's working all things out You're working all things out Yeah
While we don't know when we'll all be together again in person, please believe that you are loved perfectly, saved eternally, and empowered as a disciple of Jesus. Share that love with everyone you meet this week. Take care.